Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and we're back again today with another episode of our Random Card Challenge. As always, the rest of the episodes will be linked in the description if you want to check them out. The basic idea is we draw a brand new team for every major battle from my old collection of Pokemon cards. In the last episode, we took on Giovanni in Celadon City and beat our rival in the Silphco building in Saffron. That win over Gary was completely thanks to a legendary Pokemon known as Magikarp. We've come back around to the Team Rocket Leader already, so let's draw a team for yet another Giovanni battle. We're going to need four Pokemon for this matchup to face off against his Nidorino, Rhyhorn, Kangaskhan, and Nidoqueen. For what seems like the 80th time in this series, we will be using Bellsprout, sort of an unofficial mascot at this point. I think there are only three left in the stack now, so we're finally running out. We've also got Gyarados, Graveler, and Butterfree on our team. That's a really good draw, but unfortunately it means no more Gyarados for the rest of the game because that's my only one. The same goes for Butterfree. That may seem less extreme, but in this stack of cards, Butterfree is certainly better than most. Let's have a quick look at the team. Butterfree's at level 41 with Aerial Ace, Safeguard, Supersonic, and Psychic. Quick side note, one of the things I really like about this challenge is getting pretty great movesets with Pokemon I'd never ordinarily be using at this point of the game. Next up we've got Graveler at level 35 with Magnitude, Defense Curl, Rock Throw, and Self-Destruct. The heroic Magikarp from our battle with Gary has evolved and he's got Surf, Flail, Strength, and Hyper Beam. Bellsprout's up last at level 37 and he's got Razor Leaf, Growth, Sleep Powder, and Cut. Okay, I think this one should be simple enough, let's get into it. We send out Butterfree first, and the Team Rocket Leader sends out his Nidorino. One Psychic cuts him down into red health, but a weak Poison Sting poisons Butterfree. You know what they say, float like a butterfly, stung like a beach? That might not be it. A second super effective Psychic knocks out Nidorino, giving us the first win of the battle. Giovanni sends in Rhyhorn and we switch out to Bellsprout. If you're new to this series, it's probably worth noting that my eternal goal is to use every member of the team I draw, but the battle style is on set, which makes things a lot more difficult. A couple of hits from Fury Attack don't do much to hurt us though, and Razor Leaf is four times effective, so just like that, it's down to a four on two. When Giovanni sends in Kangaskhan, we recall Bellsprout and put Graveler in on our side. Rage and Mega Punch barely register with the Rock Ground type, who fires back with Magnitude. Kangaskhan resorts to lowering Graveler's defense because she really can't hurt him as things stand. Two more blasts of magnitude finish her off, making it a 4 on 1. This quartet may well be the most successful team of the series so far. Nidoqueen's outlast for the Rocket Ruler, and when Gyarados comes in, we get a stark reminder of how weak he could be prior to the physical special split. With no physical water type moves available, it takes us 3 hits to knock out the Drill Pokemon and earn the victory. Still, it was a very easy match overall where our whole team survived without losing much health at all. Now that we've cleared Team Rocket out of Saffron City, we can head to the gym to take on Sabrina. Before drawing our team for this battle, I had to add a bunch of cards to the selection pool. It consisted of all of the Safari Zone Pokemon, Hitmonchan, a couple of Rhydons, a Dratini, a Dragonair, and probably a few others. I either didn't record this though, or accidentally deleted it, so you'll have to take my word for that. That's our customary piece of general incompetence for the video, so hopefully everything will go smoothly from here on out. Right, let's draw our team of four for the Saffron City Gym Battle. For our match with Sabrina, we drew the team of Diglett, Paris, somehow another Bellsprout, and the newly added Dodrio. This is not good. I think we're going to be heavily reliant on Dodrio here, but even then I'm not that confident. Sabrina has some seriously heavy hitters on our team, and our four Pokemon are averaging under 50 on base special defense. Well, let's check out the movesets anyway, starting with Paris. At level 37, the Bug and Grass type has Bullet Seed, Spore, Slash, and Leech Life. Not the best attacks, but Spore will hopefully come in handy. Diglett's one level up at 38, and he's got Slash, Sand Attack, Magnitude, and Dig. Bellsprout has just gained one level from the last battle, but he's unchanged otherwise. And finally, we've got Dodrio at 43 with Tri Attack, Uproar, Pursuit, and Fly. This one's gonna be tough, but let's give it a try. We send in Paris first, and Sabrina picks her Kadabra. As he uses Reflect for starters, we get a free chance to put him to sleep with Spore. Two slashes later, the Gym Leader is forced to use a Hyper Potion to keep him alive. Three more slashes, and his fight's done. Paris gets the first win of the battle without even taking a hit. When Venomoth comes in, she hits Paris with a quad effective gust, but being the beast that he is, Paris survives and uses Spore to put her to sleep. We recall the legendary bug and bring in Dodrio, who flies high into the sky. 
I have no idea how that works with a three-headed wingless bird, but who am I to question it? Venomoth can't wake up in time to defend herself and goes down to one fly. Sabrina's Mr. Mime comes out third, and while we switch into Diglett, she starts setting up. With a couple of barriers and a calm mind up, we're in a bit of trouble. Even though we got off a couple of sand attacks, Mr. Mime's defense is now up four stages, and her special stats are raised too. We switch out to Bellsprout, who gets immediately annihilated by a Psybeam. So much for being the mascot. We switch Paris back in, but his legendary powers have begun to fade in old age. Not many people know this, but the lifespan of a Paris is only a matter of minutes. Another Psybeam gets the better of him, and just like that, it's down to a two-on-two. -two. When Diglett is sent back out, he digs underground and Mr. Mime Baton passes out to Alakazam. Now we're in serious trouble. Baton Pass switches out to another Pokemon, but it keeps the stat buffs, which means Alakazam has higher defense, special defense, and special attack. The only slight upside is that the sand attacks carry over too. The only plan that I could really think of here was to keep going with sand attack until Diglett fainted and then hope that Dodrio could avoid hits and win this. Before long, Diglett goes down and it's all up to Dodrio. After switching in, the normal flying type hits one try attack and she's then immediately pinned back with Psychic. Luckily, she survives, but one more hit and it's over. A logistically confusing fly cuts Alakazam down to a sliver of health before Dodrio avoids future sight, but Sabrina heals Alakazam right back up. The sand attacks pay off as Dodrio avoids three more hits on the way to knocking out Alakazam with try attack. Mr. Mime comes in, and with Dodrio helicoptering her three necks rapidly in a circle to stay afloat, she can't hit a Psybeam or a future sight. That allows Dodrio to get dizzy and plummet to Earth, landing on Mr. Mime and knocking her out. This was another incredibly close battle that I was pretty sure we were going to lose. Somehow we came out on top though, earning the Marsh Badge to leave just three free spots in our badge case. And that'll do it for another episode of the Random Car Challenge. Next time out, if all goes to plan, we'll be going after Koga and Blaine. Things rarely go to plan though. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.